Alright, welcome back to round two of my video series on vector art. Uh, this video we are going to go over the basics of the pen tool and working with paths and that sort of thing. Uh, this is going to be sort of the most basic way w that you actually create things uh, in vector art. Uh, once again, I am using Inkscape from Inkscape.org. Uh, what you see here is a series of very wacky shapes that, that I will be sort of using as examples um, on how to create objects. So I brought this in. It's something I drew and then scanned in. Uh, you can bring in raster um, files into Inkscape just to like trace on top of or what have you. And in fact, that's going to be the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put this um, image on its own layer because I'm going to be clicking all around it tracing these shapes and I don't want to accidentally move it around and stuff like that. Inkscape has a layers option, uh, layers functionality. Uh, so you can, up at the top of the menu here there's a layer tab and then you can open up this sort of layers window. It opens up off to the side over here. Uh, you can also press shift control L if you want to get fancy. Uh, but essentially this is layers just like uh, Photoshop or any other program. Uh, I'm going to create a new layer and call it Sketch. And, uh, uh, so right now this thing that I brought in is not in any layer, it's in a layer called Root, uh, which just sort of means it's a no layer. So I'm just going to uh, cut that out, Control X, and then make sure I've selected the Sketch layer and then paste it in there. And so then this little eyeball toggles um, whether you can see that layer or not. Uh, the lock uh, is locking, so when I lock the sketch layer, it means I can no longer move this thing around accidentally. So on top of my sketch layer, I'm going to create an ink layer, which is what I'm going to actually draw on above the current one. Okay, so to actually start uh, doodling over these things, first thing I should mention is that uh, to trace these, I do not have a tablet right now. Right, right now in front of me there's just a keyboard and mouse, just like anything normal. Uh, you do not need a tablet in order to create good vector art. In fact, I would consider it uh, not very helpful at all. Uh, so yeah, once again, I'm tracing these using purely my mouse. Um, and that's all you need. So before I trace it, because I know it's going to give me issues, I'm going to open up the fill and stroke uh, window. It's under object and then fill, fill and stroke. You can also press shift control F. Uh, but what this does is it controls the color and the stroke width uh, and the fill color of everything you create. So uh, when I try to trace, you know, in this thing right here, it gives me it, these weird uh, black middles that I don't want. Uh, that's because right now it has a fill on it. So if I go to the fill tab over here and click the X, I remove the fill, and then everything's good. It's just making plain old lines. And so let me zoom in on this one right here, and I'll show you the basics of the pen tool. So for whatever reason, people seem to really freak out about the pen tool, and they always complain about how hard it is to learn and how hard it is to use. Uh, I consider the pen tool very, very easy to use once you get the hang of it. Um, Essentially, all you do is you click to create a point, and then you drag it anywhere else, and double click, create a new point. Uh, you know, just click around, make the new points, and double click to finish your line. And there you have it. You you have a line. <laughs> uh, uh, things get a little bit trickier once you have to you know, trace over a curve. So in these things, once again, I click to start my path. Then I'm going to choose somewhere along this line in order to create um, a new node. So I'm going to sort of, it's better to choose uh, the sort of straight away as you can. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to click and hold, and then it brings up, I don't know how well you can see it with the video resolution, but um, the, the line that I'm drawing has sort of become an arc. and. Right now I'm jagging around the control points, which uh, sort of changes the shape of that arc. So I'm going to drag it around to make sure it fits my line good, and then do once again with the end points, click and drag, and then press enter to finish my line. And there you have it, one very nice, smooth looking curve. Uh, I can do the same thing for the one below. Once again, click to start, uh, drag out my handles, 
So that that's same thing with the other one, and then enter to finish. Uh, if you need to sort of combine them, uh, so it's, this one has sort of uh, these these sudden jaggies in them. Uh, so once again, just like drawing a curve, click to start, drag my handle out, double click to finish that one, and then what I'm going to do here is because if I if I had tried to draw this all with one path, uh, it, it would have sort of it wouldn't have those nice sharp points that I wanted there originally. Uh, so this right here is sort of blunt; it's not as sharp as it could be. So what I'm essentially going to do here is uh, create a normal path and then add a new path to it. So I'm going to create a path just like normal, and then if I this this line is completely finished and you get these little boxes that show you the endpoints and every point in the line. If I click on that, then I'm essentially adding to a path that I already created. So I can follow through with that again. And now I have a very sharp uh, point to this line. And I can do the same thing for the rest of them. Of course, it's a little hard to follow these lines perfectly because my hand does not create perfect arcs. Uh, unlike Inkscape, which creates everything. Uh, one thing I haven't shown off yet is that well, after you've created a line, you can play around with the, the nodes that you use to create them. So, you know, move around the start node anywhere I want. Uh, control Z that to put it back. This, for instance, uh, this arc down here is looking sort of wide. So if I click that node, then I can see the handles again that I used to make that arc. And so by dragging those around, I can essentially do whatever I want to this part of the line so I can make it match better. Maybe that side too. Uh, so that's the basics of forming lines. Uh, one thing I should go over is uh, changing the the width and the color of the lines. Once again, this is done in the fill and stroke panel. So if I go over to stroke paint, that is the um, color of my stroke or my line. Um, Inkscape has this very nice, large, and easy to use. Uh, color picker for everything. So uh, now let's go ahead and make it green. Um, go over to the stroke style. There's a few advanced options here like uh, how Inkscape will render the shape of the corners and whatnot. You generally don't have to worry about those too much. The one you're probably going to be working with most with is simply changing the width. So for instance right now it's at 10 pixels wide. I can make that line be 2 pixels wide or I can bump it up on uh, 20 pixels wide. Um, yeah, pretty simple to work with the lines once you made them. So I think that about covers it for lines. Let's let's uh, move down a little and look at these guys. These are essentially uh, shapes. So instead of well, n what I should say is that none of these lines up here uh, were closed, meaning they had a start and an end. In order to make these shapes, I'm going to have to close my lines. So. Uh, that is done simply by having the endpoint of your line be the same thing as the first. So once again, I'm going to uh, create some lines, trace this thing, and then you might notice that uh, I'm ending uh, this line the same place where it began. In Inkscape, it actually uh, snaps to the point, so that's very easy to close up. So when I do that, what I have created now is a, a shape, a polygon, um, and it behaves a little bit differently than an unclosed line does when it comes to setting the fill and stroke and everything. So for instance here, if I go to the uh, fill, and I give it a black fill, um, you know, it behaves exactly what you want it to do. You notice that before, when I had this regular line and I tried to give it a black fill, it looked really wonky. Uh, this is because the way it generates the fill is it simply looks at the beginning and end of the line and tries to draw a straight path between them. It doesn't make any sense when the line is open, but once you create a closed shape out of it, it suddenly makes sense. Uh, I can, of course, also remove the the sort of outside border uh, by going back to stroke paint and giving it a stroke paint of none. Um, once again, uh, change the, the fill around to make this any color that I want. Blue, okay. Um, one thing perhaps that I should also mention at this point, or maybe I'll, uh, maybe I'll show it off with this next one. So this is kind of a teardrop shape. It's a little bit tougher to trace. Just got, you gotta, just gotta have a good eye and know where to put your points. So there we go. Trace that teardrop shape. Uh, let's zoom in and do some fancy things. First fancy thing we can do is um, 
I always recommend choosing your colors using the HSL, which means hue, saturation, lightness. Um, I'll spare you the color theory, but essentially it's the, the easiest way to figure colors. Uh, you, you can see that it has HSL, but it also has this thing called A that's alpha. So that's transparency. You can make anything that you create semi-transparent. So oops, let's not do that. Um, if I make a new shape underneath this one or on top of it, uh, right, it's semi-transparent. Another fun thing you can do here is uh, change the blur, so give it a fuzzy edge, you know, useful for shading and highlighting, but we'll get into that later. So that's that's making uh, closed shapes. Pretty simple. Uh, let's scroll down here and look at our last challenge which are uh, these funky fellows. Uh, so in order to properly trace these shapes, I'm going to have to bust out a few things. Uh, the first thing is using the shape tool in Inkscape. So it actually has multiple of them. There is a rectangle one you can see off to the side here. There's also a circle one and a polygon star one. Uh, let's just create a rectangle. Um, nothing, nothing too sophisticated or unusual about it. You can just you trace a rectangle and there you have it. Let's not make it transparent though. Let's make it a less ugly shade of color. I don't know. Okay, there. Um, so we have a rectangle, but the thing we wanted to do here is that it sort of is a donut or I don't know nut shape. It has this this shape in the middle that I want to cut out of it. Um, best way to do that, uh, we have to look at the path tools. So. Once again, vector stores all shapes, everything that's on it as sort of its own object. And then you can play around with those objects uh, in order to make more complicated shapes. Uh, so in this case, we want to cut out a part from the middle. So first of all, just for the sake of being able to see the part we, that, that we want to cut out is, reduce the transparency on that, uh, trace this shape, and I'll use, if you hold down the control key, then you get, um, perfect angles, perfectly straight lines. So we'll chase the shape, make it black so that you can see it perhaps. And then we have to find some way to cut this shape out from the one uh, that's behind it. And that is done simply by selecting both of them and then going up to path up here and then there is an option for difference. And if you look at the, uh, the bottom of the screen, you probably can't see it because of the resolution of the video. It gives you a little um, description of what that particular path effect will accomplish. So the one we want is difference. It will take the shape of the top path and remove it from the bottom. Let's go ahead and do that. Now you'll see we no longer have two shapes. We just have one. It is the shape of the rectangle, but with the um, that little trapezoid cut out of it which might be something that you'll wind up needing to create. Um, similar process over here with this diamond and circle connected by a tunnel. Um, let me see. Well, let's, let's make the circle first. So once again, the, let's create that it's just a shape tool called circle. Uh, holding down shift and control will make it a perfect circle. And then, of course, that's not big enough, so we can scale it up again. Uh, in order to create that diamond, I'm going to use the polygon tool. The polygon tool lets you create you know, polygons or star-shaped things. Um, up here is where you can set the difference between a polygon and a star. Uh, we need four corners. And then we'll move it up. Well, of course, this isn't terribly different from a rectangle tool, but actually, let's do this up proper. There we go. Uh, make a, a good rhombus from scratch. Um, let's go ahead and put that into place, and then combine them. I'm just drawing my own uh, rectangle. I could have used the rectangle tool already. So now I have three shapes, and I want to combine them all into one. Uh, once again, there is an option up there in the path options to do that. We simply select all three of them, go to our path options, and union is the one we we're looking for. Union takes all of the paths you selected and turns them uh, into a single new path. So once again, we can do that. And we have a new um, path that is a single thing. Uh, we can look at the nodes and well, it's all one shape. So it might be a little hard to see uh, you know, how you would actually make things out of, uh, out of these, uh, certainly in terms of the, the lines and the closed lines. Um, you can essentially uh, trace over anything 
and you know get a relatively good vector representation of it. And in fact, well, actually, what I recommend you do is you should do something like what I did here, uh, just to practice your pen tool and your shape creation abilities. Um, you know bake scribbles or like grab a photograph or something and see it, how well you can trace over it using the pen tool just to sort of get a handle on it. Uh, yeah and then you can hopefully start to see how you would be able to use those skills in order to actually make an illustration. Uh, I feel like I must have forgotten something but anything I might have forgotten I am sure to go over in the next video. The next video I'm going to create an entire vector illustration from scratch, so it's probably going to be longer than any of these other two, uh, but it'll it'll give you the most sort of insight, so definitely, <laughs> certainly if you feel like this isn't helping at all, uh, watch that one and you'll be able to really see how a vector illustration comes together. So yeah, stay tuned.